Hi, welcome to the very first lesson of the unit Earth's Changing Climate. This is a lesson for sixth grade science, and the title of our lesson today is Introduction to Climate Change. My name is Karen. I am a science teacher in Seattle, and I'll be guiding you through today's lesson as you analyze some data and look carefully at some graphs that scientists have have used to try to answer some questions. Today, some things that will help you be successful. It really helps if you have someone else to talk to. I'll be posing some questions, but if you have someone else at your house that you can talk to about some of your ideas, it will make the whole lesson deeper and more meaningful for you. You could contact a friend, maybe call them up or send a text and ask them if you can video chat and do the lesson together. That's a great way to do this lesson. Also, you'll need something to write on to jot down some of your ideas. It can be a notebook you have laying around or some paper that you kind of keep together. There will be 11 lessons all together. And so let's get started. Before we can dig very deeply into a unit about climate change, we have to understand the word climate. So climate is the general weather pattern over a long period of time. So that when we talk about something like climate change, it refers to the overall climate on Earth changing over long periods of time. So you're going to learn a lot more about this as our unit progresses. Remember, this is just lesson one of 11. So over the next few weeks, you're going to take on the role of a student climatologist so what's a climatologist? A climatologist is a scientist who studies the climate. And they would be looking at temperature, wind, rain, all of those things, but over a long period of time. Okay, so to help us understand a little bit more about what climatologists do, we're going to watch this video. It's a documentary that shows how a professional climate scientist works. This is going to help us understand more about what that word climatologist means. I'm Dr. Derek Lampkin. I'm an ice and climate researcher, and I study how large ice sheets respond to a warming climate. An ice sheet is a large block or mass of ice that covers an extensive area at the size of a continent. I spend my time thinking about the Greenland ice sheet. We're seeing 300 billion tons of ice being lost annually from the Greenland ice sheet. That's ice mass being dumped right into the ocean and making a direct contribution to sea level rise. So we're very much concerned about what the long-term health of Greenland is going to be. When you look at a large block of ice like Greenland, it might appear to you as if it's not moving at all. But it turns out that ice moves very slowly. The ice sheet moves from the center to the edges like a conveyor belt and breaks off into large blocks which go into the ocean and melt. What we're most concerned about in a warming climate is how fast that ice is moving to the edges and how much contribution the ice is making to sea level rise. Here's the inside of uh, one of the main tents at Swiss Camp. I just got back from the Greenland ice sheet on a research expedition where we use GPS to monitor the movement of the ice. GPS operates just like it does in your car. It tells you your accurate location on the Earth's surface at any moment that you're moving. So we use the same kind of technology, but we connect it to poles that are frozen into a fixed position on the ice surface. And then as that ice moves, the pole moves, and we're able to monitor how fast that pole moves. Our data showed us something actually quite exciting. The ice was moving faster when there was more surface meltwater present in the summer. I became very much interested in understanding how much surface meltwater is being produced, how it flows across the ice sheet surface, and how it makes its way into the ice sheet. Your job will be to help us map out these blue dots, which you can clearly see in the satellite image here. My students help me do this by utilizing images collected from satellites that are in orbit that take pictures of the Earth's surface. Yeah. What look like maybe one channel is actually a network of interconnected. We're able to identify where the lakes are, where the channels are, and we can map out and understand how much they change and how much water they deliver into the ice sheet and its impact on the ice movement towards the ocean. 
Greenland has contributed over the last decade about eight millimeters of sea level rise. It doesn't seem like that's a whole lot, but it matters under circumstances where you have hurricanes and storms slosh water onto the land and inundate coastal areas. The more the public understands how these ice masses influence uh, their everyday lives or will influence their lives in the future, the more they'll have an understanding about how to impact policy so that we reduce the impact that humans have on the climate. After watching that video, I have a lot of really interesting thoughts going on in my head. I wonder when he was talking about the little bit of water that's added to the ocean, how that affects storms. He also mentioned how important it is for us to talk to the public about these ideas, but this is making me feel excited about a unit about climate change. Some of these ideas that he was talking about are ones that we hear a lot about in the news. And so it will be interesting to, to really look at the data the scientists are looking at and see if we can come to some conclusions. So I wanted to show you a picture that is similar to what you just saw in the documentary. This is showing um, a glacier. You can see here, this picture was taken five years before this picture, and you can see a pretty dramatic difference in the amount of ice on the Earth's surface. And um, this is a little uh, video that will show the Arctic ice that you can see over the Arctic Ocean. It, this, the pictures from satellites starting in 1979 all the way until last summer. We don't have the data yet uh, for 2020 because they take the, the images in the summertime. So as you look here, you can see how much smaller the ice is from the beginning in 1979 until the end in um, just last summer. Okay, so so what does this what does this tell us what does this mean so your job during this unit will be uh, to take on the role of a student climatologist you'll be working for an organization called the world climate institute and you're going to learn about and then educate the public about what's happening in this earth system what's happening to the ice the data that you'll analyze in this lesson is real data collected by real scientists who work for, for instance, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. Even though the World Climate Institute is a fictional organization, it's based off of real ones, so that you can take on the role of what a scientist really does during this unit. Okay, so let's get our first email from the World Climate Institute. This comes from Irene Lee, and um, the subject of this email is welcome. So let's see what Irene Lee is going to tell us. The World Climate Institute is pleased that you will be assisting us in reaching out to the public and explaining a complicated process, why the ice on Earth's surface is melting. To help, you will need to learn how energy moves through the Earth's system and how this is related to the temperature changes across our planet. This is complex, but important science, and explaining requires a complete understanding of the entire system so that you can make sense of it for others. Only then will you be able to explain what is happening to our planet and why the ice is melting so rapidly. So your goal by the end of this unit is to be able to thoroughly answer the question of why the ice on Earth's surface is melting. So to do this, you'll need to learn as much as you can about the Earth system so that you can understand the changes that we're currently seeing in the Earth's climate. So. Your first task as a student climatologist is to review some data collected about ice melting or decreasing at the poles. And it's important to be skeptical and review data carefully. So when looking at the data, the question that I want you to keep thinking about is why did some scientists disagree? And um, there was disagreement. And so let's take a look at why that is. So let's take a look at this graph. Um, Let's, let's get a sense of what's happening here. When I look at the top, it says here the title, the amount of summer sea ice in the Arctic from 2002 to 2013. Um, this graph is going to be telling me a little bit about some data about the ice covering the Arctic Ocean 
for 11 years. That's what I can see when I look at this, this title at the top. So let's look at the other information that's on the graph. At the bottom, there is the x-axis, which is the one that's the horizontal one at the bottom, and that shows time. It starts in 2002 and goes every year until it looks like the last data that we collected was 2013. And then the side label here, the vertical, the up and down label is the y-axis, and that says million square kilometers of ice. These labels tell me that I'll be looking at how much ice was in certain years, and that will help me understand the graph. So with this, with this information, I can begin to read the graph. I see points here, here, different points on the graph, and I see the line that connects those all together. And I can see that it's showing the amount of ice measured during the summer months it's changed a lot since the graph moves up and down. And um, it would be a good idea right now to pause the video if you can and talk with a partner or maybe just write some of your own thoughts in um, a notebook or a piece of paper about what do you think this means? And do you have any other questions about the data? Always keep in mind that question that I asked you to think about when looking at this data. Why did some scientists disagree that the ice was melting over time? And when I look at this, I can see it definitely is going down, but then it seems to rise up again, and then it goes down, but then it goes up again. And so there's definitely changes. And remember that this is the summer sea ice. So we're not seeing changes like we would throughout the year. Obviously in the winter, there's way more ice than in the summer, but this data is collected only at the summer. So we can see the lowest point of the ice each year. So let's take a look at another graph. This one shows the summer sea ice from 1980 to 2013. So this one showed me 11 years of data. And this one here is showing me 33 years of data. When I look at a lot more data, I see a lot more changes up and down over time, but I, I definitely am seeing over 33 years of data, a trend that seems to be going down. So let's see if we can look at data from either further back than that. 33 years is a long time, but we've actually been monitoring the amount of summer sea ice since 1870. And so when you look at this one, this is showing us data for 143 years. It's a lot of years, and I can see a lot of up and downs, um, a big drop here, but then it totally rose back up again. Seems like it's normal, but then there seems to definitely be a decrease. That seems different than these up and downs that are happening there. What do you notice about it? I think you should pause the video again, write down some of your thoughts and ideas, talk to a friend. Let's look at one more graph. Now this one isn't about ice. This one is showing the global average temperature. And this graph shows the change in temperature from about the same time as the ice, about 10 years later. And so this is the average global temperature. It's going to take into account data from all the countries all over. And what we can see here is that there's lots of up and downs. And a brand new vocabulary word is the word trend and also fluctuation. So let's understand what those words mean and then we'll come back to this graph. So the word trend is just a word that means this is the overall direction in a set of data over time. And fluctuations is variations in a set of data. So let's look at this one more time, but this time we're looking at the trend. Remember a trend is the overall example and this blue line here this blue dashed line shows us the trend, and we definitely see an increase over time in the global average temperature. And a fluctuation is just a variation, the up and down, up and down, it happens all the time, natural cycles in Earth's systems. But although we see that there are fluctuations, the trend overall is a consistent increase in, um, in the temperature over 143 years. So, as we're looking at this data that scientists actually looked at and analyzed, we can see that there definitely is evidence that supports the idea that the ice on our planet is definitely melting. And there seems to be a connection to the amount of temperature on the planet during a certain year and the amount of ice that happens. And so in our next lesson, let's explore 
the idea of energy a little bit more and how temperature and energy on our planet might affect the amount of ice that's on our planet. Okay, this is a really exciting moment because we have uncovered our brand new key concept, our first one for lesson one of Earth's changing climate. So this key concept says that although there are many fluctuations, remember that's the up and down, there is a trend, a trend of rising temperature and decreasing ice on Earth since about 1880. So now that we've looked closely at the evidence, we can be more certain that ice and global temperature have been changing, which helps us understand this key concept. But in our next lesson, we're going to investigate why that might be happening.